Greetings to you, all our viewers across the world, our viewers on YouTube, our viewers on Facebook, all our social media handle from King TV, Evo Fizzle. We bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bring greetings to you from this wonderful channel, from this wonderful platform. When we are talking about Evil Free Zone, we actually means a place where evil stays far from you. And this is the kind of only channel as such in the whole world. Welcome once again to King TV. And my name remains Adebayo Adesa, your anchor for Business Trailblazers. Business Trailblazers is an amazing program that brings you business secrets, you know, business concepts, business ideas, business revelations from God's mindset. And this program only happens on King TV. You are welcome, our viewers, to another wonderful episode of Business Trailblazers. I want to trust God that since you have been, you know, joining us, since you have been watching, you have been getting great values from this powerful program, Business Trailblazers. I want to believe that you have gotten a lot of secrets, a lot of new concepts, a lot of good ideas that is able to enhance, you know, you starting that business, that is able to enhance you, you know, having that powerful growth you actually hope for in that business. So why don't you do one thing as we, you know, get on board with this powerful episode for this evening? Why don't you just share our link on Facebook? Why don't you share the same link on YouTube? Why don't you... You no, know, host a watch party and invite your friends, you know, to come and watch. Of course, your business partners. Of course, you can even watch with your colleagues, even at work. Wherever you are, this business program is open to all. Maybe you are in career and you're looking at, you know, starting business on a particular day. This is the best program for you. And this is the right channel for you. So you stay tuned as we share our links. You know, you know, invite new viewers. You know, if you have not subscribed, also, you can also do that and um, our details will be scrolling right on the screen. And I want to encourage you, maybe along the line, you have gotten some revelations, you want to share with us your testimonies, we have our contacts shared across the screen. Please mail us, call us, WhatsApp us, whichever way is it, you know, it's easy for you to reach out to us, please do reach out to us. And probably maybe you are still stuck in some areas and you want to get, you know, you want to get answers to those, you know, business questions. I really trust God that on these channels, you are going to find those answers. So please contact us from the details scrolling around the screen. So Business Trailblazer is a powerful business uh, program that tells you exactly things that you need to know about getting into business. Of course, we have had wonderful series, you know, in the past, wonderful episode, you know, starting from the business from the beginning, which was our first episode. And we also, we have considered who is qualified for business. We have also qualified, we have, we have also discussed who, you know, actually can start any business. And we have also discussed how to start any business. How to start any business, we had a part one, we had the part two. And of course, uh, this is another part, which is a bit of a um, practical part of, you know, that teaches you on how to raise capital, how to raise capital. All right, so um, I'm really excited to share with you this um, moment, you know, on this today's topic, which says raising business capital. Raising business capital is actually uh, the topic for this particular episode. Friends, brethren, partners, it has, it's, it's, it's a big deal when you talk about capital in business. You have got a powerful business idea. You have got a vision. You have got a revelation. In fact, you have even, you know, kickstarted by, 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 by writing down your goals, you know, putting, you know, you have even gotten a clarity on how exactly this business should be. You had a big picture and a very clear picture on your heart that tells you exactly where your business is going to start from, how it's going to start, and all of those. But when it gets to the issue of capital, you know, a lot of people get stuck. And we are going to be dealing with that in this wonderful episode. And I want to trust God, our Father in heaven, the first and the only trailblazer that you're going to get values this evening. So pick your pen, get your, get your tab, get your notepad, begin to write something down as God, you know, wants to speak to you from the angle of business, from the angle of how to move your business career to the next level. So uh, we're going to be talking about capital, but there's a need for us to properly define capital. 
And capital in this sense is the money or the funds needed to produce goods and services. The money or the funds that is needed to produce goods and services. So in basic terms, the money that is used to start a business is called capital. In basic terms, the money, the funds that you use in starting that business is actually called, you know, your capital. However, 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 uh, there are so many other capitals. There is, you know, there is human capital. You know, there, 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 there is other type of capital. You know, some are not even in form of money. But for this particular context, for this particular, you know, um, powerful, um, you know, series, we are looking at capital in form of money. And without money, most likely you'll not be able to start that business. However, we have a lot to share with you, so you, stay, you just stay tuned as we go on in this amazing project. But before I properly talk about um, how you can effectively raise capitals for your business, I would like to put across a few questions to you. Because for us to be able to consider this pro topic properly, you know, raising business capital, we should have, you know, seen our last, last episode, which is how to start any business part two. You know, if you have not watched that episode, please go back to it. It's right on this same channel. Try to watch it again and see how you should position yourself before starting a business. And of course, it's going to open you up powerfully and it's going to give you those business answers that you actually require. So I'm putting across a few questions to you um, on this series, on this section, on, you know, things that you should know that determines your capital raising. And of course... I, like I said again, it's, those questions are actually put to us in the last episode. So the first question is, what is the size of your business? Because without you properly being able to put a size to your dream, to your vision, to that project, you are not able to quantify the amount you need. You are not able to properly you know, sit down and you know, do a draft, do a sketch of the money you need to use for this business. You are not able to properly give a budget, you know, to this particular project. And trust me, without a, you know, a, a budget to anything, you know, there's no, way, there's no way you can go. The government of the countries, ministries around the world, they all have a budget. So budgeting is quite important. So you're trying to figure out the size of the business, we can also call that to be budgeting. So you are saying, if my business is in this size, then I'm going to need this, I'm going to need that, I'm going to need that. Some business, of course, for you to start off, you are going to need a lot of huge capital. So we want to know what exactly, you know, is the kind of your own business. For instance, you want to go into a business in logistics, then it's very important for you to get cars or vehicles or motorbikes, whatever it is. Maybe you want to start a, you know, you want to start a business in, um, in, um, in e-commerce. There is a need for you to properly picture out you know, the, a proper way, a standard way to actually you know, uh, get deliveries done to your prospective customers. So, of course, you want to go for e-commerce. And you don't have a plan of how to get, you know, you know, maybe dispatch riders, maybe, you know, little more cycles, little vans to do deliveries across the city. Then how do you go? You can see it all around the world. We have Noon.com, we have Amazon. They all have a platform on how to get their deliveries done. So what kind of business are you starting? You should be able to figure out, you know, the particular mode of how your business runs. I mean, the particular size and, you know, what have you. Well, let's take this commercial break as we go on with this powerful episode.
Welcome back, our viewers on King TV, and I remain your anchor on the same program, Business Trailblazers. As we go on in this powerful episode, I'm going to put across to you, again, the second question. And the second question is, what is the mode of this business? You want to start a sole proprietorship business, a business that allows you to have you know, the sole right, the sole decision to your business, it means that allows you to even go out there for you to go and meet your clients all alone. It becomes this that allows you to even go out there to go and do your deliveries all alone. If you want to start just on your own, there is a minimal amount of, you know, capital that you need for this. Maybe you want to, you know, say, I want to go for, um, of course, for partnership. I want to partner with few partners. I want to partner with few friends. You know, the capital also would determine what you guys are about to do, of course. And, and in this case, most of the time, the capital is not shared from you alone. You have partners on board means that they are going to be collaborating with you in raising funds. For instance, if the project is going to be around 10,000 US dollars, maybe a partner is taking um, $3,000 a partner is taking $2,000, another partner is taking maybe uh, the, 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 the chunk amount of $5,000. And of course, in partnership business, when raising capitals, the proportion of the capital given is also the proportion of the profit being shared. You don't expect to share you know, equal you know, amount of profit with the person that has the largest share in, in the establishment. So that also connotes that you should be able to figure out the business mode. If you want to go and franchise with a particular company, you're going to look the size of this company. You want to franchise with KFC, and uh, maybe you reside in the US. You want to partner with KFC to bring KFC down to Africa. You're going to need some, you know, some amount of money, some good amount of money. Of course, you want to partner, uh, maybe you are in Africa, and you want to partner with a restaurant that already exists within Africa. The cost of doing that might as well be minimal to you, know, you bringing a franchise, um, a company all the way from um, the UK or all the way from the US. So these modes actually determine, you know, what kind of funds are you looking for? How much are you actually looking for? So this should be well, you know, noted and, and, and cleared off. Of course, we had that run in the last episode. All right, so the third question I'm going to throw across to you is that what is the location type of this business? Is it a business that has to start in a shop? A business that has to start online. A business that wants to, you know, just want to leverage on the office of someone or want to share office with someone. Or is it a business that wants to, you know, that actually wants to have its own office? Or maybe it's even, maybe in the kind of country you live in, you know, your business must have a license. Of course. So you want to look at the license cost. You want to look at a lot of things. So also, maybe your business requires you manufacturing. You want to look at a mini factory or a large factory, or you're even saying, okay, you know what, for now, I don't want to produce all myself. I want to go down to produce with a particular company that is already into production. So this company brings you on board, you pay them for, the, for their services, and they produce your items for you. The same way people go you know, down to China to have their products produced in their name and still sell in whatever country they have. It doesn't have to be them producing it themselves. So all these things, has to be, you know, well established. So are you going to have a factory? Is your factory going to be in the town, in the industrial area, or in a, on a remote part, a remote city of wherever you reside? So these answers will give you the right question, I mean, the right answers towards how much you are looking for to start this business. So all these questions being properly answered by any businessman, you know, uh, it, it launches you to the realm of finance. It launches you to the realm of, you know, capital raising. It launches you to the realm of funding. Funding on its own, it's, I don't know how to put it, but um, um, it, it's, 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 like, it's, like, um, it's like a realm on its own. It's, it doesn't just, it's not, it doesn't come cheap and it doesn't come too difficult, all right? But you need to understand what you are supposed to understand, you know, with the concept of funding. And taking you back to the last episode, we talked about the effect of prayer as a child of God, as a Christian. We talked about, you know, prayer being a conscious dialogue, you know, between you and God. And in that particular episode, we called it the submission of your project, the submission of your project. Yes, brothers, sisters, partners, prayer is a key. Prayer is a major key 
No doubt about that. But trust me, when there are things you are supposed to do and you have not done it the right way, if you're praying towards your finance, if you're praying towards you know, raising the capital, you might spend a lot of time praying. So what do I mean? Let me explain further. So if your business assertion on the size, on the mode, and on the location are wrong, I'm telling you there is no capital. If you are not able to properly picture the size of the business you want to start, you can't properly put you know, the, 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 the amount of funding needed to that business. If your business mode is not divine, you are not able to put a capital to it. And of course, if your business is not well balanced on the part of the location, you are not able to properly put a finance to it. For example, uh, we, we are live, you know, uh, from the city of Dubai, of course, in the country of UAE. And um, we have different areas in this, com in, the, in this particular city. We have different areas in, the, in this particular country. And um, let me just say, for example, we have an area called um, the Sheikh Zaid. And uh, Sheikh Zaid is, the, is termed um, the, 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 the most parched city of business. And we also have another area that is called the Business Bay. And we also have an area that is called Dera. So the cost of you running your business in Dera is different from the cost of running your business in Sheikh Zaid, which is the most, most recommended city, you know, I mean, for business in the UAE. It's, it's, it's a city filled with skyscrapers and all that. So for you to own an office in Sheikh Zaid Road, you must have a lot of dollars, you know, within your account. All right, so that's what we're talking about. And of course, we have other cities within the same UAE. You want to start your business in Omaquain, you want to start your business in, a, in, a, in Ajman, the cost, of course, differs. The same thing happens to you if you're from Africa, if you're from Nigeria, if you're from Kenya. You know, there's, there are areas we call, you know, the, 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 the central business district, CBD, actually. And those are the porch areas where business happens. Those are the areas whereby you are able to list yourself, you know, you are able to address yourself from that area where your business is located. I mean, clients are already looking for you. Just a contact to your clients and tell them, you know what, I, I, just, I just started my business. My business is on Sheikh Zaid. My business is in Nairobi. My business is in Marina in, in Lagos Island. Clients already start trooping in. And I mean, they, they, they start wondering, you know, what do you have to offer? Of course, you're telling them your business is in Ikeja, Lagos, in Nigeria. You know, just to cite an example for our viewers in Africa. So that is exactly what I'm talking about. If you are able to put this assertion correctly, then you are on your way to raising capitals. But I say it again. If you're not able to put a size, a mode, a business type, or a location, a perfect location, or a perfect startup to your business, Friends, I tell you again, no capital. And you know, when I mean no capital, it's such a big deal. It doesn't really sound good the way I sounded it. No capital can be really frustrating for every business in a starter. It can be really, really frustrating for every business starters. But I want to believe God Almighty has brought you to this channel to come and see this program. And this program is going to open up your heart powerfully to know what exactly you're supposed to do. And if you're able to do that, Capital is already looking for you. Funding is already looking for you. And I believe God, that will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, and now just to press forward on, you know, on, on the issue of capital and the assertion, you know, or maybe your speculation, so to say. You know, capital on its own, um, it's about the hardest one for entrepreneurs. Yes, I can really say that because every businessman, every business partner, every business starter has been there already has been there before. Raising capital is about the hardest one. You might have the best project, you might have the best plan, you might, you might devise whatever you want to devise. You might have, you know, cooked up the plan the way you want to cook it up. I mean, even beyond your own imagination, but without capital, there is frustration. Without capital, you cannot really, you know, go ahead with that project. So every regular child of God, every Christian out there, most times, most times stays at the spot. Every Christian, every child of God out there, every believer of God stays too long at the spot of capital, trying to raise capital. And of course, what they do at that spot is that, you know, most times you begin to pray and pray and pray and pray. And our God is a prayer answering God. You know, the, the, the question, the issue is that you have, you, have, you have not put across to this mighty God the right question. 
You have not put across to him the right request, the right prayer point. You understand what I'm saying? So you might spend a lot of time praying, but see, if your actions, your concepts, your assertions, your speculations, if they are not intact, it's a big deal. But trust me, if they are intact, you might only spend a few hours praying. You might only spend a few days praying. You might only spend a few months praying. All right? Because our Heavenly Father knows all our desires. He knows all you need. He knows what your capacity is. He knows what you can afford. He knows what you can waste. And he knows what you can manage. So these are one of the problems that comes with capital raising. And you begin to ask God funny, funny requests. I'm sorry to let you know, if your requests are not properly channeled and rightly channeled, you cannot raise capital. So come on this channel, listen to this properly, follow us continually, and see what actually God is saying about you raising capital for that business. Of course, you can see that in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, which talks about, you know, you asking, you knocking, and, you know, you know your prayer has been answered and the door has been opened you know, to you. But you just don't stop at verse 7. Please extend your reading to um, verses 11, as it will also scroll on the screen. Extend your reading to verse 11. You will see that he is a loving father. The Bible was saying, if your earthly fathers can give you the right thing that you desire, you are asking for food, they are not giving you poison, if they can give you the right things, how much more your heavenly father, if your requests are made known, clear, with the right mindset, with the right concept, that is why we have introduced to you business trailblazers. Because for you to be a trailblazer, you must be following someone. And that person you are following, let it be the almighty God is going to guide you through. He is going to guide you through. I really understand what I'm saying. Because when it comes to the issue of you raising capital, you get stuck. You get unnecessary frustrations. You begin to think maybe this God is not answering prayers. Come on. He's... To, from today, from yesterday till today till tomorrow, it will ever be a prayer answering God. But you know what? One thing that I've learned about this Almighty God, our God gives blessings, capitals, fundings in the right proportion. God gives you blessings, capitals in the right proportions. And that is why it seems you are not getting your requests, even from your partners. If you, you know, you have, you have, you have, you have a partner, you are, you are, you are, you are making a request of a funding to them and, um, it is unproportional. Of course, they might drop you down. It is too high for what you have, you know, put across them. And one of the things that caused this mistake, let me just go on this before we continue. One of the things that caused this mistake is, you know, um, trying to, to, to get started too big. Let me just use it that way. It's good for you to plan big. To want to eat it big, but there is a, you know, there is a proportion of starting that business. So let's talk about funding. Funding, uh, your dreams, your visions, your business, your project. Funding is actually, or, 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 or maybe let's say raising money is quite a progressive success. It's a progressive action. It's a progressive request. It's a progressive achievement. What do I mean by progressive success, progressive achievement, or progressive um, uh, what have you? It means that when you are raising funds, it has to be proportional with what you have achieved, your capacity, you know, you know, so on and so forth. For example, you want to raise, you know, your, your first, your first time in business, you, you know, you have a beautiful project that has been tested and has been tried to thrive in the market, and you are looking for a thousand dollars capital. That's excellent. That's awesome. It might be too low for you. I'm just trying to strike an example. So trying to, you know, get a funding for $1,000 to $2,000 is very, very absolute. Now, again, depending on your own mindset, depending on what you have perceived, depending on what that business is, as we have asked ourselves earlier. So you don't want to quote me that I said your business has to start for $1,000. It depends actually on the proportion of those business and what you can actually undo and what you can actually be able to control because God will bless you in proportion you know, to that which you can control. You can also do your business maybe like from $5,000 to $15,000. Of course, you know, it's a bit proportional. It goes in line. That is most especially I'm talking to the business starters now. From $1,000 to 2000 from 5000 to 15000 that can look too, you know, I mean, can look quite good for you. It can look quite good for you to handle and for you to kick off. And please, this is not, um, it, this is just my own opinion, just to guide you. It's just my opinion as a businessman, as a business coach. It's like, you don't want to start your business from chasing $100,000. Yes, you have a beautiful plan. 
Of course, maybe, you know, uh, at a particular time, there was nothing like Jumia in Africa. There was nothing like Noon.com in the UAE, for example. There was nothing like Amazon in the US or maybe Alibaba in some years past. There was nothing like that. Maybe one person conceived that idea and this project actually takes a huge amount of money. But of course, they start raising it little by little. So they start the project and it keeps going, you know, on and on like that. If you're going to look properly to the history of all these, you know, amazing platforms that I've mentioned, you'll see that they actually started small. Is it Coca-Cola? Is it IBM? You know, is it Bill Gates? Whatever or whoever you want to mention, they all started with the proportion of, you know, you know, a, a good amount of capital and they grew over time. So don't let it be like, oh, you know what? If it's not even 100K, it has to be 150K. That is US, you know, no, no, uh, thousands of uh, US dollars. And it makes you begin to think, if I don't have this amount of money, I can't go. I can't start. I must raise this amount of money. And that already puts you at a stop. That already puts you at a very difficult position. It puts you at a very difficult, um, at a very tight corner. And you're not able to move forward, you know, you know, over that. But see, we are not saying that you cannot raise such amount of money. We are not saying you cannot raise 100K to start a business. You cannot raise 150K to start a business or even $500,000 to start a business. But the sincere truth is that you starting a business, the amount, the proportion should be feasible. Because if it's too much, if it's not proportional, trust me, you cannot be able to handle it. I want to believe and trust God you have gotten powerful values from this wonderful episode. And um, from the next episode, we are going to go for that. We just want to encourage you, start that business, go for that business funding, take that business to the next level, see you at the top because you are a trailblazer. My name is Adebayo Adisa. See you next time. God bless you.